to see Joe standing there in the front yard uh, watering these flowers. Hi, Pap. Yeah, he's the ladies are friendly. There's Carrie coming out of the house. Boy, she just tickled death to see us. I gotta go to the <laughs> Well, there's Joe. He's going to the bathroom, he says. But he's there's Ferber. Oh my goodness, there's Ferber. Hello, Ferber. Ferber. Come here, Ferber. Come. Come. Oh yeah. Let's see Ferber do her world her national trick now. Oh, Ferber. Ferber, now. Roll over. Come on. <laughs> Ferber, now you're starting to piss me off. Come on. Not in my camera. Now. Roll over. Come on. Roll over. Oh, there she goes. All right. I tell you, that was really. It's up there with watching nails rust. <laughs> like parking your car in the driveway and listening to it rust. I could take a picture of you barbecuing, so. Anybody can see what I mean. I'll burn you a bun. Huh? You're gonna burn my buns? Them dudes are hot. There's some rare footage here now. Oh, yeah. Woo! Oh, yeah, not real good. Y'all smile now. Hey, it's too dark. Oh, I can take that picture. You know, when I was at SOS, a girl that was there was just coming with a brand. She called her friend. It was like $8 for that. Pep, you want a moon? I'll give you a moon on the camera. <laughs> you later. Honey. Come here, Bertie. Wanda. What? Hi, Miss Carrie. Here's Wanda. I'm going to get dressed Yeah, I will. See if we can get a picture of the falls and the surrounding area without getting the water on our lenses. There's the falls. That's the Canadian side over there we're looking at with the observation towers. Again, we're just panning the Canadian side. There's an observation deck that we'll go out on. Observation tower up in that area. And as you go down into the gorge, you can see the gorge crossed over the way is the boat area. People have taken the boat trip and made, made of the mist that goes under the falls. And again, we'll just pan up the river here. You can see the mist as it comes off the falls. 
see it as it goes down. It goes over the falls. We're, we're real close to this one fall here, probably within 50 yards of it. This is the river that takes us from the visitor's area over to what they call Boot Island. Looking upstream, you can see the white water and see where the falls actually begin. At this point, I don't know what the length of this rapids might be or what the fall is in this given area, but perhaps later on as we find some literature, we'll be able to tell. That's just a scene upstream. downstream from the bridge that uh, goes over to Goat Island. And as you look down, it's about a quarter of a mile. You can see where the water drops off and where this uh, first falls on the American side begins. I'll put the time and the date on here. It's, it's in the afternoon. It's 3.22 on Wednesday the 23rd. We've only been here about 20 minutes. There again is just some of the scene. There's one of the observation towers that's on the Canadian side of the falls. We're looking west into the sun. I hope this picks up a little bit. There again, looking at the falls. I don't know see the rainbow there in this or not. think that I'd turn around. Turn around, Betty. Hey, Betty? 
turn around. You're on TV. Smile. This is no place to wear a cap. She's holding my cap in her hand and she's complaining about her hairdo. Oh, it's terribly windy up here. You've almost got to plant both feet today to, to get it. But there she is, Miss America, my bride of 30 years. We finally got to Niagara Falls to take this as it heads upstream. Got, Betty says it's got a Canadian flag on the back end because the boats operate from the Canadian side. Evidently, there's two of them because looking on across there then into the mist, here comes another boat that's going downstream. Looks like the tourist business is still in full spring and full swing because both boats now, they're going to pass. Back in now is really full. The other one going upstream is not quite as crowded as, it, as the one going down. There you go. Horseshoe Falls it says press line 2,500 feet. In other words, it's 2,500 feet across it. The daytime height huh, is 167 feet. Daytime flow in the summer is 90,000 cubic feet per second. We're looking at, uh, at Horseshoe Falls. We're looking into the sun and into the mist. We've got mist on the camera lens, but all across there you can see the water as it comes down. And here again, we're on the American side of the Horseshoe Falls. Laying all jokes aside, it uh, is more of a spectacular view than what I had really expected. I didn't expect it to be quite this grand, but uh, it's really set up for the tourists that they can get out and really see these uh, falls. And again, there's Betty standing down there in the mist, waiting for me to quit taking pictures. She's right there in the line of, of Horseshoe Falls. I'll try and zoom in here as soon as those people move out of the way. I'm having a little problem with the sun. It's about 4.30 in the afternoon their time. There she is right behind the falls now, walking this way. She's getting her hair wet. She's not a very good duck. Horseshoe Falls from this angle, about all you can see is the mist coming up. Across is a, all kinds of tourist centers. And on the other side, it's all walled in up above the, between the two falls. Oops. Tomorrow we're hoping that we'll get over there, get some shots, which we'll be looking up between the two falls at a different angle. But you can see the people over there, and again, it's a very good view, view from across the way over there. So we'll try and catch that and look back over this way tomorrow. This evidently is a power station down here. I don't know exactly what's in all in the stream now. On the American side of Horseshoe Falls at a little park, it's uh, called Terrapin Point. This is one of the trams that they use to take people around on various tours that they have. And again, in the background is a uh, visitor center. They have a uh, going into Goat Island. We're looking at the uh, skyline and uh, the city of Niagara. This is one of the older hotels the Niagara Hotel. There's another one of the older hotels. This is a new building of some kind that's going up there. I don't know whether it's an arena or auditorium or what. There's Betty out on the bridge. Very patiently waiting. She knows that I'm goofing off, just taking pictures. But she's looking at something down there. But there she is, or again up at about the main observation deck, looking again across at the Horseshoe Falls. And again, we're less than 50 yards watching the water go over the American Fall. Only about 10% of the water goes over this fall. The rest of the water goes over the Horseshoe Falls. 70 feet drop on that Horseshoe Falls. 
crossed over there is a bridal view, I think is the name of it, from Terrapin Island. We took some shots from there. Earlier in the day, the sun was kind of shining into the lens. I don't know, I haven't reviewed the pictures to see how they are, but it's getting late now. It's about 5, 5.25, 5.30. And again, we're looking over wide angle view of the uh, Canadian side. Here again, they brought the boats in. There's one now, it's at the dock. They run up until about five o'clock, make their last trip. Hopefully tomorrow we'll be able to take a trip. We're looking down now into the gorge. Again, we're looking out over to the Canadian side some of the hotels. Now we see the observation deck and the elevator that goes to the top. In just a few minutes, we're gonna go up through there. And again, you can see the outline of the needle tower over on the Canadian side. They have another one down there. But this is just a view now of of the falls and we're going to walk Holy. out. Here we are again going out on the observation tower. You can see the top of it. See the decal that reads Niagara Reservation 1885 to 1985 State Park. So we'll be going out. We're doing some construction, going up the elevator. Now of the uh, observation deck, if you see uh, an obstruction in front of you, it's a wire grill. They've, they've got it up there so Betty won't jump up, and jump off and take a little swim down below. But you can look upstream, see Horseshoe Falls, and again you can see the American Falls. I'll back off here in just a minute and I'll show you what it looks like just looking through the screens. But I'm trying to shoot through an opening here, which is about uh, four inches wide by putting the lens through it and getting a picture. So I'll back off here and we'll let you see what the observation deck looks like. All right, again, we're looking through the observation deck. You can see on the New York side, this looks like a playpen at the state penitentiary. And again, looking through the grill, you can see some of the hotels, some of the walkways, some of the boat areas, the needles now in the observation tower. This is a glassed-in area, and we're looking up again at the uh, falls. I'm not sure what kind of a glare we're going to get off of the uh, window, or how many fingerprints we're going to be filming through. But again, we're, we're right here, right above the falls. From the falls, from this observation deck, we're about two floors from the top. The water here is not as rough as it is above it because we're about a half or three quarters of a mile downstream, it looks like. But you can see one area here of real dark water as it uh, swirls in along the edge of the river. And again, we're looking on down, Canadian side would be on your left, the American side. Now at river level, where they uh, board the boat, of course it's getting late in the evening and the boats have been closed down. We're looking downstream. There in the distance you can see the bridge, one of the bridges that crosses over into Canada. I'll zoom in, those three flags flying are the American flag, I guess I'll have to check it, but I think it's the state of New York flag and of course the Canadian flag there on your left. And again, this is just a shot. I'm going to pan up now because we're down at the very bottom of this gorge. All right, here is the uh, observation tower. I'm gonna zoom up. You can see the deck up at the top and some of the shots where we took from the very top of this observation deck. And in a few minutes, we're gonna go back, get back on the elevator here at the base and ride back up. Now I'm looking up river 
And about all we can see now is mist. You can see over on the Canadian side, but the wind today is blowing probably 15, 20 mile an hour. And it's blowing out of the north. Down at the base of the, uh, of the gorge at the river's, river's edge, we're looking up probably 125, 130 feet. I'm gonna pan out now. I feel the observation deck. We're panning upstream. Horseshoe Falls, bringing it in, it's probably half a mile up there. Looking across now at the American Falls, which is very close, we're probably within 100, 150 yards of it. As the water goes down, Center and Betty's walking ahead of me. If you can see her, she's just now going in. We haven't been in yet, so we don't know what's in here. But we're going to go in and see what uh, what the state well, it looks like. It's picking up. There's some left bright lights, and you can see those see those towers up there. This is the American Falls down here. It's showing up pretty good. Thursday morning, I'm standing in the uh, hotel room on the uh, in the Sheraton Hotel on the ninth floor, looking out the window directly at uh, Horseshoe Falls, and again you can see one of the towers, and the other one's visible from another angle. Betty's sitting there writing postcards. You can see how much fun she's having. She can do that at home. But here she is in Niagara Falls writing postcards. On the balcony from our hotel room, we're looking across now at the American Falls. You can see it in the distance. We'll zoom in, zoom in if we can get it going right for a close up. And that's the American Falls. There's a little piece of land that sticks out there. I guess that's Bridal Point where we were at yesterday and took some film. Just a shot of the gorge as it comes down from the other falls, which is Horseshoe Fall. Here about 8 o'clock in the morning. It's cloudy. You can see the mist as it rises up where the water hits the wheel there at the bottom of the falls. 
quite a sight from here. It's probably a mile downstream from where we're at. That's the Horseshoe Falls, and we're on the Canadian side here. We'll pan out. It's just a shot now of the uh, Rainbow Gardens. This is one entrance into it. It's very, uh, very pretty. In the background, you can see the uh, Kodak Tower. It's been here for years and years. Ahead of you is the Shirt and Fox, Hole, Fox Head Inn. And this is where Betty and I stayed last night. But uh, this is looking back away from the uh, falls. You can see some of it. Here is the uh, Caroline Bell Tower that we're looking at. It's at the end of Rainbow Bridge. And the Rainbow Bridge is the main bridge. And again, we're looking into the morning sun. So that's the main bridge of the uh, Caroline Tower where they have the bells. The Hotel Shirt and Bra. Kodak Tower. It's in what they call the uh, Maple Leaf Center, which is a big amusement center on the uh, Canadian side. We're looking across now at the uh, American Falls. And in a minute, it's, uh, again, it's early in the morning. It's a cloudy morning, just about the right amount of sun to get the picture. We're going to pan up. You can see the uh, rock division between Horseshoe Bend and the American Falls. Horseshoe Falls. We'll come in a little on it. Probably, I would guess, a half mile downstream. Falls. On the Canadian side, you can see Betty standing there, and just directly across the uh, the river is the uh, American side. Good morning again, and they haven't started the tours yet, but directly down below us, you can see the uh, boats that they take the uh, tourists, the uh, Maid of Niagara. Aid of the Mist, Betty says, up into the tour. They're getting ready. They've got one at Dockside. And there are a few people, and they're getting ready to take the first boat looking across at the American Falls. And over there, where you see the uh, tower, as the base of the tower as it comes down in the walkway, and as the steps go up yesterday when we got here, the uh, wind was blowing right down the river. And that whole area was such a mist that it was so wet that about all we could do was come out of that tower and get around that little house down there or a little souvenir stand because of the mist. Now, today the wind's changed and it's actually blowing in the other direction. And before we leave, we'll get back over there and I'll get a shot going up the falls. Now, this area between these, the big falls and this little area coming over is Bridal View. And as you come down Goat Island, there's a pathway, and you come down the pathway, and right on the left-hand side between the small falls and the main fall there on the American side, there's a railing. Somebody to grab me for the heels, and I could have laid down. I could have played in the water as it went over the falls. You're just actually that close. But again, there's the gorge, and the view of the river as you get in now to Horseshoe Falls. This cloud of steam early this morning looked like it was going probably three or 4,000 feet into the air. And you couldn't tell where it ended and the other clouds began. I guess it's the uh, vapor and the condensation that creates that effect. But you're looking now at Goat. Last night, uh, I took some pictures out of the balcony of the hotel. And you could see the different colored lights as they shined uh, pastel colors onto the falls. They're blue and red and green and so on. This is the uh, generating station. And I'm going to zoom in here. And those uh, boxes with the lenses on them, there are two of them right there, are the lights, the spotlights that they shine across onto the falls at night. And they illuminate the falls. Body by repetition, we're looking at Horseshoe Falls and we're looking directly upstream again. You can see the water as it comes into the base of the falls. And you can see this 
cloud of steam, and it isn't going quite now as high as it was earlier this morning. This morning, I swear, it was going clear up to the cloud layer, and it was just one solid layer, probably 4,000 feet high. But that's uh, looking down the, uh, the river. And, uh, the water, Lake Erie, I understand, is about 300 feet higher than is Lake Ontario. And it's this cataract, this uh, river about 14 miles long that flows down there. And the uh, depth of the falls here is estimated at something like 160 to 170 feet. But this is Horseshoe Falls. And we're looking from Canada back down the river. The uh, break where the falls go over as we can get. There's a terrible mist coming up as we pan across. I don't know how much of it you can see. But, uh, here we are, and we're right just within a few feet of where this river breaks and goes over the falls did here you, at Horseshoe Bend. Did you get it right down here over the edge? Yeah. Now, if you were, Betty wants to get in the barrel and uh, have me shove her off, and she can go right over the skyline. And as you look at it, you can see the yellow bug, as they call it, going up. It's going right now into the kind of flowering bush. Betty wondered what kind it was, so we're going to zoom in. We're going to take some close-ups of it. Perhaps somebody can identify what type of a bush it is. But again, this is just one of the flower gardens that they have. Panoramic view of Rainbow Gardens. The hotel we stayed in, Shirt and Fox Head Inn. It was there in the background. We stayed around the corner from on this side where we could see the falls. It's a very beautiful garden. The uh, Kodak Tower in the background. Another hotel. As I try to pan, I'm going to pick up Betty here somewhere. And we're looking now into the sun. More of the gardens. This is called Rainbow Gardens. I'm looking back toward the falls. Again at one of the flower gardens. What are these red ones now? The big ones are rose begonias. Begonias, okay. What's this uh, yellow one down here? That? That's another begonia. That's another begonia. I don't know what that stuff is. That's pretty. That's just stuff, huh? Yeah. But you don't know what it is. No. Okay. Here's another one of your yellow ones. There in the background are some more of your that's an azalea bush, but it's not blooming. Pan down there to that, uh, these little spider things, whatever they are. Okay, they're a purplish color. Oh, we got those at home. We got them at home. They're, they're little purple things, she says. We don't know what they are. But, uh, we're taking this and we'll get them identified. Okay. So we're back now to the a little unusual. It's a double-decker sightseeing bus. A little bit of old London here at the uh, Niagara Falls. Of course, for a small fee, uh, they're willing to take your money and take you around to see the various sites. But it's a little unusual. There goes Betty walking across the street. Back up now 
out of Horseshoe where it made the turn and coming back. All you can see is that there's the fall. Spectacular. There's bridal point. A split in the falls. Here we go. We're down at river level now on the sightseeing boat, the Maid of the Mist. We've all got baptized, got our Duncan. We're back on our way. Way in. We came over to the American side, and it doesn't seem to be as busy over here as it is on the Canadian side. And across, you can see one of the made of the mist. There are four of these boats as it goes. Those are seagulls that you see flying. I've got one here, and I'm going to zoom in on him, see if I can't get a good picture. Now, yesterday, I was kind of disappointed. We didn't see any of the gulls, but today you can see they're they're really flying. They're everywhere. I guess because of the mist. Here we are at one of the observation points, and again, we're shooting into the sun, but we're looking up at the falls on the American side. Yesterday when we came in, the wind was blowing right down river, and it was just a regular bath in this area. Now this morning, the wind has completely changed directions, and instead of blowing downstream, it's blowing upstream. We're getting ready to leave now. Actually, it's 12 o'clock here. This 11.03 is still central time. We're on eastern time. Again, we're just panning the skyline on the Canadian side, Rainbow Bridge. And there's the river where it's going to go. I have no idea. There's the sky lawn. On down is another tower. There goes Betty. She's getting ready to go. She's overlooking it. She won't face the camera. But again, we're looking up where that uh, cloud of mist is. Behind it is uh, Horseshoe Falls. And we're looking now into the sun, panning to the top of the American Falls. So this will probably be one of the last shots that we take in Niagara. We have left Canada, we've come clear across Michigan, we're back into Indiana, and we're at the Indiana Dunes State Park, which is out by Gary, Indiana. We're looking out now across at Lake Michigan. You can see a seagull sitting here in the picture, and down the coastline is some of the steel mills, some of the industrial sections of Gary, Indiana. Back of us is a building that's one of the uh, entrances. And again, I'm panning toward the sun. Here at the Indiana State Park, Indiana Dunes. I hope that you can pick Chicago up as we pan across into this area. And I'll put it on telescopic. It's very hazy over toward there. And I'm not even sure looking at the camera lens. I think you can see it. Some of the skyscrapers of downtown Chicago. We're probably 25 or 30 miles across the lake 
looking at it in that area. Looks like the lake's fairly calm today. Waves look like they're two to three feet. I'm sure in the camera they look like they're bigger than that. It's a very calm day here. I saw Seagull just land. There he is. Zoom in again. Cruiser now as he comes along the coastline here. Nice boat, but again, it's Here it is, 11 o'clock on Friday the 25th, as we watch this boat as he goes across. There's a whole flock of seagulls, as you can see. They're just now taking off. At first we only saw two or three, but now, there they go. And looking out across here, I hope you can get a view of this. In the distance is the skyline of Chicago, and you can see the, I'm sure the Sears Towers and the Prudential Building, but again, you're looking at many, many miles across there, and I'd guess from 20 to 30. So it seems like we've only moved about 100 yards, but it seems like the outline is better here than ending here at uh, the Indiana State Dunes and the State Park. And we're looking at one of the dunes. You can see where people just get up there and just plain sunbathe along the beach here. As simply as another view, this uh, building that you're seeing the corner of, I'll take a picture of it later on, is the concession stand. Again, another shot just here at the, at the dunes. You can see Betty standing there at the, at the car, patiently kicking the gravel and everything, waiting for me to get some pictures. And Lake Michigan there in the background. We are in Chicago. We're looking now directly north of where I'm at it, at the uh, Adler Planetarium. And what you see in the distance there is Navy Pier. This is where some of the large ocean-going vessels come in through the locks on the St. Lawrence Seaway and through the various Great Lakes, and they come into Chicago. There you can see a large ship that's tied up alongside. I'm not sure just exactly. It's a passenger ship of some kind and where it's from. I'm going to pan the area because I cannot at this point get the full skyline of Chicago. And so we're looking now from Navy Pier, and I'm going to pan back to the west at some of the Chicago skyline. You can hear a airplane is coming in over the skyline. We're just within probably a mile of Miggs Field here in Chicago. But back to the skyline, this is a pan of the skyline. The building that we're looking at there is the Sears Tower. Now this building, believe it or not, is the tallest building in the world. It's taller even than the Empire State Building. And it's the Sears Tower. We'll pan back out and back around. I believe that's the aquarium we see there and some more of the skyline. We're right down here on the uh, on the lake shore of Lake Michigan at the Adler Planetarium and the Miggs Field. We have uh, quite a number of other tourists here. It's a picture-taking time. There are four or five buses. Most of them, as you 
can hear in the background uh, do not speak English, or at least are speaking their native tongue. But this is the skyline. And again, we're looking out at, at Navy Pier and all. Pan in here as best I can. And you can look at that large, I'd say that's an ocean going vessel of some kind. Boy, they're really. Oh, sorry. Now, the building you see here is the Prudential Building. Now, this building was built in the middle 50s when I was living here. And in 55, 56, along in there, this was the tallest building in Chicago, something like 35 floors. Now you can see the building directly to your left. Uh, and it just, it isn't even half as tall as that building is. And then as we pan on around, and you get a picture of the uh, Sears Tower. And again, this building is taller than the Empire State Building in New York. Okay. Little American tourist waving at the fool with the camera. But she's standing there, and again, you can see in the back. Right now, looking right at Miggs Field, and you heard that uh, airplane as it landed. We're within probably a quarter of a mile of the main runway. Looking across is uh, Soldier's Field, and we're just panning on down kind of in the sun to the southwest along the uh, Lakeshore Drive. And I'm going to have to turn back and get directly out of the sun. And again, this is just the uh, drive coming in to Adler Planetarium, Miggs Field, and to the Lakeshore area. Comes an airplane in. He's just now touching down. You come in right uh, east of the loop over the lake, and you land, and either you get stopped and or you haul out the life raft real quick because right at the end of that runway, you can see sparkling over there, is Lake Michigan. There have been several planes landed here just since we've been here this afternoon. The shot will be of McCormick Palace or McCormick Place Hotel. And just down below it in this long, flat, dark building that you see is McCormick Place. Now again, I'm panning to the southwest. It's about uh, one o'clock in the afternoon. The sun's causing me some problems. But this is the main exposition hall here in uh, Chicago where they have many of the home shows, the automobile shows, and all these various shows. But it's McCormick Palace, and it's located just to the west of Miggs Field and just to the south of uh, Soldier's Field. This is a two-engine aircraft. He just made his turn. He's on his roll. And again, he'll be taking off. I'm not directly in line with the uh, runway now, but you can see as he's making this takeoff, that he'll either fly or he better hope he can float because right at the end of that runway, the new toy, you find new shots that you can take. We're down now from the aquarium, from uh, Shedd Aquarium. We're down looking directly west over to Soldier's Field. And here's one of the many harbors that dot the uh, Michigan, Lake Michigan shoreline. And you can see all of the, <laughs> I suppose, mortgage boats. The banker would have a heyday here. And right up at the top, past the harbor, past the uh, green grass, the cars running along there are running on Lakeshore Drive. But again, this is directly east of Soldier's Field, south of the Loop area, and we're looking at uh, McCormick Place Hotel and the McCormick uh, Hall, the Exhibition Hall. All of this is probably within a distance of three or four miles from the uh, Chicago Loop. Now there's the Sears Tower in the background as we look. And so you can see that it's all in a relatively small area. And the lake today was extremely calm. 
course, we were back in the breakwaters, but it's almost a mirror perfect. The day is a bright, sunshiny day, temperature between 65 and 70 degrees with a clear sky, and we couldn't have asked for it. Uh oh, we got an American tourist, it seems like. Turn around here, American tourist, wave. Oh, that's a typical American tourist. And she's standing directly in front of the aquarium here in Chicago. Uh, when you come in here, this is kind of a little peninsula out to the east of Soldier's Field. And uh, if you're ever in Chicago, the aquarium, of course, there's the Museum of Science and Industry. And uh, there are many things here that are very worthwhile. I'm telling you all the time that this is Shedd's Aquarium. I'm turned around. This is the Adler Planetarium. And you go in there and they have all of these shows with the uh, uh, stars and all of that that you look at. And they show it up on... I got turned around. The brown granite building that I've been calling the aquarium was really the planetarium. This that we're looking at now in the distance is actually Shedd's Aquarium. They're all in very close, uh, close proximity. Uh, you turn on the same street and uh, they're just really down the street, probably three or four blocks from one another. But uh, bear in mind with me, your American tourist got turned around, and this is a picture of the corner of Diversity and Pine Grove. And as best I can in the background is the Embassy Hotel. This is where Betty and her friends lived when they worked in Chicago back in 56, 57, before we were married. going into the embassy. We'll zoom in. There she is coming this way. That's where they lived. She lived up on the, about the third floor of the building. Now we'll zoom in and pan out down. All right. This is the uh, 5659 South Kildare, where we lived. When Betty and I got married, I didn't have a place to live, and this apartment was for rent about a week before we got married. So I came over. The uh, people that owned the place, were, name was Romy, Mr. and Mrs. Romy. We went in and we lived where those two windows are, and this uh, window here to the right of the doorway was actually where we went into our apartment. This was their garage, and we parked along the street here. This has been, we lived here from, when we got married, uh, in, well, we come in in October of 57, and we lived here until May of 59. While we lived here, Debbie was born, and this was her first home. It was right here at 59. You know that, don't you? No. Uh-uh. Well, anyway, this is 6023 South Colon. This is where we lived, and this is the neighborhood. All the houses, as you can see, pretty well look the same. This one looked basically the same, but uh, the tree in front of it's kind of blocking it. At, uh, Midway Airport again. In the background, you can see the terminal building. And this original terminal building with the first tower that you see was really all that was here. The uh, tower in the background, which is now the control tower, was not here from 55 to 59 when, when I was working here. Again, this is the gate area, and the airline that I worked for, the gates were at this end of the terminal. It was a horseshoe-like terminal, and you walked clear around, and uh, we were uh, united. It was at the far end with TWA and Delta, and then Capital, the airline I worked for, we're at this end of the airport. Again, we're looking directly into the sun, but this is a terminal building here at uh, Midway Airport.
at this Carlton Motor Inn, Airport Motor Inn, it used to be the Caparella Motel. But again, it has also changed its name. Midway Airport, Third Street now, and Midway, we're looking directly. It goes a small plane now as he goes on his run. Back in the background, you can see the hangars. like a 737 twin engine jet. As he goes up. Okay, here we have a small jet coming in for a landing. The one coming in right over the treetops. Following in. That's such a bad tree over there. Lights coming right over the top of the house. Looks like he's. Yeah, two of them right behind each other.
I think he stopped down there. I don't think he's going to land after all. Now here he comes. Yeah. Okay. Hey, just a small one. small one coming in here now yeah. and he better get himself out of the way or he's going to get run over with two big ones well, have fun. okay thank you okay again we've got another big plane coming in at this angle it looks like they're coming right down over those trees. He's coming in. I've got him in, in view. He's a big jet. And he's going down. Now, more toward the corner. Again, we've got another big jet coming in. Coming in right across us now. He was going on in. He's just a smaller one. I thought he was a little larger than what he is. This shot again is looking back now over toward the terminal building. Camouflage area over there then is a uh, radar. It's like a radar and a guidance system they use it like for mobile runways or you know if they take a, take it out to a remote site and they take over a runway or build a runway and they can set up the planes there and they can come in and out and they have all their communications that's, right that's there. That's communications, okay. This big one here now, this is the B1 
That's the B1A. B1A. That was the one that Carter canceled. Uh huh. We're now on to the B1B series of planes. Yeah, that'll be the one flying over. B1B will fly over. Fly over. Okay. Now this one here with the twin tails is the. Uh, I think it's called the YB71. Y. So we're going to see the SR-71 then as it flies. Right, the SR-71A is what's going to come over, and that was this is a prototype of it. It was supposed to be a bomber and a fighter. They were going to develop one of each, and they ended up just going to reconnaissance with the SR-71A. Okay, and then in the distance back there, you see the old C-47s. Big one clear to the end back there is, a, is the old C-48 then, a little variation of the DC-3. You got me. Huh? You got me. Yeah, we use, we use those in commercial service. This, uh, this first one there, the DC, which was a commercial DC-3. Okay. Some of these in this middle row then look like vintage planes with a, it's a World War II bomber sitting down there at the end. I don't know whether that's a 17 or exactly. Like a 17. Yeah, B-17 sitting there at the end. 24, I'm not sure. Must be a 17 then, like. And this row here, that's. Okay, this is this is a. Uh, the little one down here is one that they drop out of an airplane. It's kind of a. Okay, and these are just vintage jets here that we see in the row. Probably Korean. Vintage in that area. Right, uh, right B flyer. That's a replica of the uh, what the second one that the Wright brothers made. That's an AT-11. What is that? P-51. This is a B-25 Mitchell. The announcer said the plane was built in operational in the late 1940s. Is it really? Is that what he said? Yeah, that's what the announcer just gave. I thought it was true. Real K-1 
camera. Oh. Down pretty far. We're the dials. This is brand new. We just got this about a week ago. That's your battery pack? Yeah. Okay. That's on A7, did you say? Stepped off one of the planes. Make another pass back over now. Yes, he's got his gears down, so he'll go real slow. They, always, they do a slow one and a fast one. So this is as slow as he can go.
Is she okay? Yeah, I'm waiting. Fine. Wait. They're not going over the crowd, is it? F-16 now? Yeah. Slow as it gets. So if you don't get it this time, you'll I'm, I'm on him. I've got, I got my, sh shot him there. got my slow shutter, my high speed Wait, shutter on. on.
60 degree turn. Sideways. I guess I'm kind of spoiled American bear to stick the This, this must be it. This is a, I thought this was a B-24. 24 I can check for you. Testing one, two. Some more. How about? It's like a big cigar. Yeah, this is a B-52. Close up as I can. I'd like to stand there with that thing dropping stuff out of it. <laughs> Put them guys in the rice paddies in the bathroom. Paint this uh, picture on this plane just for this. Uh, no, that could be awesome. Well, it has. I suspect it was some strategic painting, though. That's all right. In focus here. Do you think this is a KC-10 tanker, then? It's either a KC-10 or the 135. All right, I got him just as... Steve Staker, please meet your sister at the information the, uh, tent. Tower, yeah. Steve uh, Staker, please meet your tower, sister yeah. at the information okay. tent. Should be another one flying over here. The C-130. Well, hang on. Mrs. Lou Hill, meet your yeah, daughter at the information tent. Mrs. Lou Hill, meet your daughter at the information tent. That's the one that crashed on the board rag. Remember dropping that cargo out the back? Yeah. 
confused again. Yes. Yes. I don't know what it is either. I'm sorry. Jeez, what is that? It's a little thing. Yeah. That's an F-15? I think it is, yeah. That's an F-15. If you want to play it. Wright Brothers airplane as they're dismantling it, getting it ready to move back. In the background, you see the mock-up of the uh, B-1 bomber as it sits here at Wright-Patterson. But again, it's the of, uh, the Independence the DC-6 that uh, was the uh, Air Force One of Harry Truman he used while he was in office. Installation that Dwight Eisenhower used when he was president of the United States. One of the displays here of the various models of airplanes. Again, the lighting is very poor here in this area of the hangar. It's getting late of an evening. The final day of the show is a Sunday evening. Another one of the displays, the uh, picture in the top left is the F-16. Picture in the upper right is the F-15. And the pictures on the bottom, early World War II bomber. General pan of some of the airplanes that normally are in the museum hangars that have been staged. 
It's almost dark now, and about 8.30 tonight, Glenn Camel will be their feature entertainer here. Oh, just pet the doe. Just pet her there. Huh? Tell that dog. <laughs> if you call it posing or not. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing, dog? seem to scratch or anything. Uh, she like a huh? Somebody may be gone for the weekends. Yeah. I got it zoomed in. In fact, I got it zoomed in too far. Huh? Think so? It's supposed to be a low light camera. Yeah. I think she must have been hungry. No. Well, she'd probably eat it. She'd probably eat it. Would you put milk in there or just bread in there? Not much of a beagle, she can't find her way home. Well, she's been on a chain all the time. Well, you gotta eat the bread, too. Mm 
Is the red light still on? Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Betty and her dog. Uh. Betty and her dog. You're going to have to pour that bread out on the sidewalk. Kristen, what are you doing? Huh? How about you, Corey? What are you doing? Huh? Kristen, talk to me. Huh? Tell, tell him your name and when your birthday is. No way! What? Okay. Look at him and tell him what your name is. You see, he, he won't know on the camera. I don't know. How about you, Corey? When's your, what's your name? Corey? And my birthday is May. Your birthday is May. How about you, Kristen? My name is Kristen. My name is Kristen. My name is Kristen. Why do you always have to know everything? Why? Hey, why are you looking at the coffee, the mud? Mom, you have to ask you on. Give the date that we bought it and how much it cost and all that. Just don't forget back, please. You're going to put a... Yeah, I'll get it. Smile, Debbie, you're on TV. I don't even want to look at you. Hello. You came, if you remember, to help Kenny. What are you doing? His name is Kenny. <laughs> well, honey, she's giving you information for you. Where are you going? Kristen? We're going inside to Hey, me. smile. Let me see that tooth. Let me open that mouth. Let me see that tooth. There we go. I got it.
This is the exhibition at the Visitor Center at Mark Twain State Park. Some of the displays that they have, the murals on the walls. Salt River as it was in the flood stage back in the years of 58 and 73. Another one of the murals that just hang on the wall showing the buffaloes as they were. Of a rain in July of 81, 
and the salt washed out about a year's worth of work on the earthen part of the dam. Well, in due time, we got things under control, and we started to rebuild. They went back to work on the earth embankment, and they pushed harder than ever. Finished it up within two years. Now that's moving. While all that activity was going on, we were well into phase three, and we finished the power house and installed the two turbine generator units. They're powered by falling water, and I know for a fact they can generate enough electricity to supply a town of about 20,000 people. And another thing about the turbine units, one of them can be reversed to pump water upstream into the lake. This pump back capability will help maintain the lake level. It was a big job, and it took us almost 13 years to finish, but it was sure rewarding. And it was a big day when we closed the sluice gates and the lake started forming. Today, the Cannon Dam is quite a sight. It's nearly 2,000 feet long. It rises 138 feet above the stream bed of the Salt River. I'm proud I was part of this project. And I appreciate it when folks like you stop by for a visit. Thank you kindly. Where are they going to? No, I understand that. This is where the next one's going to be. This one's graded off. Yeah. And they said it takes three months to build each one of these. They figured it'd take a three-year project. Okay, Corey, your turn. I like to have extra time. Reset. Grandma won't reset. Reset. See? Hmm. Just won't reset. Reset. 
push start. Yep. Kristen, move out of the way. <laughs>